be a good time if you haven't thought of it to silence the ringer on your phone. Thank you. Um, Could it be worse? Yeah. <laughs> it's always worse when the authors do all <laughs> This evening, Linda Greenlaw returns to the Jabberwock. Many, many years ago, she was here with her first book, The Hungry Ocean. It had just come out, and we were just starting our author program. I think it was a first for both of us. Um, I still had a cafe in here. This was a cafe. And Linda cheerfully perched on the chairs and spoke to the customers scattered around the cafe tables. And she totally charmed us all. The Hungry Ocean went on to become a blockbuster bestseller. And Linda has become a prolific writer. Two more memoirs about the fishing life on a small island in Maine. Two best-selling mysteries set, of course, on a small island in Maine. And even a cookbook with her mom featuring recipes from a small island in Maine. All of, all of her books are available at the back register. But now she's gone back to the deep sea and sword fishing. And we have her brand new book, Seaworthy. The New York Times said of her first memoir, a beautiful book, a story of triumph, of a woman not only making it, but succeeding at the highest level in one of the most male-dominated and most dangerous professions. Please welcome Linda Greenwald. trying to catch anything that swam or crawled around the shores surrounding my home. When I was at an age where most kids were learning how to ride a bike, uh, I was learning how to row. When 10 speed bikes were all the rage, I had my first 10 horse outboard. <laughs> so, and you know, I had an idyllic childhood. It was like perfect. And I said that just recently to some friends, and they reminded me that I've also had a very long one. That's okay. <laughs> So anyway, um, when it was time for me to go to college and I desperately needed money, it seemed like a very natural step for me to go commercial fishing. It's what I loved to do as a kid. So I jumped aboard a sword fishing boat and headed uh, to the Grand Banks for 30 days. And it was at the age of 19 that I absolutely fell in love with my life. I like the way I feel when I'm at sea. I am passionate about catching fish. And that has never changed. I worked my way up from the deck to the captain's position in a very traditional way. I you know, stayed on a boat long enough to become first mate and eventually had an opportunity to be captain. Skippered many boats all over the North Atlantic Ocean in different fisheries, anywhere from the north coast of Brazil to just south of Labrador, all over the ocean. Always returning to sword fishing. For 20 years. Always went back to sword fishing. Try something else, go back to sword fishing. Try something else, go back to sword fishing. Really my first love. Um, somewhere in the midst of that 20 year block, um, I had an opportunity to run the Hannah Boat, most coveted boat in the fleet. Um, biggest boat, fastest boat, best equipment. That enabled me to get the best crew. So I reached quite a degree of success with that boat, combination of best boat, best crew, best equipment, and I knew how to work. So it all worked out really well. Um, we encountered a storm, the Halloween gale of 1991. Now I was reaching sort of the end of my sword fishing career. I was in my late 30s, thought it was time to settle down, go home, get married, start a family, do the things that my girlfriends had been doing while I was offshore. Um, didn't work out so well. Um, but I don't think I'm flawed. I've come to believe that uh, 
my plan was flawed. I moved to a little island off the coast of Maine, where I call home. Three single men, two are gay, third one's my cousin. <laughs> 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 that 